Hi everyone, this is Miss Longley, and today we are going to be learning about the characteristics of the plant kingdom and the four major groups. We'll be covering objective number one in today's lesson. Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be looking at the five characteristics of the plant kingdom that plants share in common. Most of this should be reviewed from first semester. The first thing that they share in common is that all plants are eukaryotic cells. This means that they contain a nucleus. Just like animal cells, plant cells have specialized organelles. They most specifically have chloroplasts, which allow them to photosynthesize. In addition to chloroplasts, plant cells also have two additional structures. They have cell walls, which are made of cellulose and provide structure, and they have this massive central vacuole that stores water and nutrients. The second thing that plants share in common is that they are multicellular organisms. This means that they have more than one cell. However, there's always exceptions to the rule, and that is algae. Algae is single-celled. However, another thing is that some scientists consider algae not really a plant. They place it in the protist kingdom. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole, but just keep that in mind that algae is single-celled. Majority of plants are multicellular. The third thing that they have in common is that plants are autotrophs. This means that they produce their own energy. They use photosynthesis to capture sunlight energy using their chloroplasts to produce glucose. Glucose is storing the sunlight's energy and can be further broken down to release that energy using cell respiration and the mitochondria. Mitochondria releases three products, water, CO2, and ATP. ATP is the energy the plant needs in order to live and in order to thrive and grow. Just like with all exceptions in biology, there are some plants that, although they use photosynthesis, they have an additional adaptation that allows them to consume energy as a heterotroph. Venus flytrap plants are an example of this. They capture insects as a source of protein. Although they can capture insects, this is not their primary way of producing energy. They still heavily photosynthesize. This is just an extra adaptation that they have. The fourth characteristic that plants share in common is that they don't move. Once they start germinating, they stay there for life. They work from home. So as long as they have enough water, soil nutrients, and sunlight, they are happy. And the fifth characteristic, plants can reproduce sexually and asexually. When they are using sexual reproduction, they are producing seeds. And oftentimes these seeds are contained inside fruits. This happens when pollen joins with the egg, it fertilizes, and then it produces a seed. This allows for genetic diversity. The other way that plants can reproduce is by extending their roots, forming buds, or forming extra long stems that are called runners. Here's an example of this. Here we have a strawberry plant, and one of the stems of the strawberry plant is growing along the top of the soil. This is what a runner is called. The tip of the plant stem reaches a part of the soil that's unoccupied and it starts to grow into the soil forming roots. Eventually a bud is formed and now we have a new strawberry plant. This strawberry plant is genetically identical to its parent plant. This is why it's called asexual. A lot of fruits and vegetables can be formed by using extension of their roots such as garlic or potatoes this is why they can reproduce asexually. But the drawback is that 
they are not genetically different. They're identical to their parents. Next, we're going to be talking about the evolution of plants. Plants have evolved from their aquatic ancestors, green algae. And what we're going to be looking at is the important adaptations that allowed plants to move from an aquatic environment to on land. So there's three important adaptations we're going to cover. Most of these you'll learn more in detail later throughout this unit. So the first adaptation that land plants need is vascular tissues. They have to have some way of transporting water and nutrients. So you can kind of think of vascular tissues as an indoor plumbing system. The second adaptation land plants needed is seeds. They had to have some kind of way to contain nutrients for their plant embryo so that when it began to germinate, it had the nutrients to start that. And the third adaptation, flowers. Plants, again, have to be able to reproduce sexually and asexually. Flowers give them that sexual advantage. So by containing male and female sexual reproductive structures, they can self-pollinate or they can cross-pollinate. If they cross-pollinate, that increases genetic diversity. So each of these major adaptations made plants better suited for life on dry land and much more successful. We are going to be taking a look at the four major plant groups in the next video, and we're going to be looking at how these adaptations made these plants thrive on land. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.